19 and 9 coming into today. Florida 15 and 11. And we're underway on Easter Sunday. Eddie Newsom calling the balls and strikes. And Amani Larry digging in for the third straight day in the leadoff position. Larry, the second baseman, ready for the 1 0 from Caglione. And he hits the strike zone for the first time today. 1 1 count. We're just underway. It's beautiful out. Partly cloudy, 76 degrees. Forecast to get to 80 before the end of the game. And that tagged him on the elbow. And Larry, for the second time in this series, is hit by a pitch and really on the same exact spot. Yeah, 11 times of the season. And that's what you want out of your leadoff guy. Work away on any way you can. He slowly tries to get out of the way of the pitch. On purpose, he stays in there and gets hit. That'll bring up the shortstop, David Mershon, here on Jack Caglione. This has been a pain in the you-know-what for the Gators this weekend. Mershon has been fantastic, especially when he runs guys' pitch count up. And he takes strike one here from Caglione. Mershon, two home runs, 21 runs batted in. His second home run of the season came yesterday in the fourth inning. A big fourth inning, and that's been the big inning for Mississippi State in both games one and two. And when you face a team, Sean, that's hot right now, we mentioned the 18 runs, 22 hits, 12 yesterday, you got to shut them down early in the game. Keep that from getting that confidence bubbling over and carrying into the next day. Foul tip, and Garrison will ask for a new baseball. Tanner Garrison, the battery mate of Caglione here today. His hitting has come along. We're going to talk about that when we get to the bottom of the first. It's a fun battery to watch, Cags and Gary, as we go by their nicknames. Throw over to first, and Luke Heyman is over there today at first base with Caglione on the mound. Luke's been in the lineup all three days, but Friday and Saturday is the designated hitter. One, two on the way. Strike three call. Boy, that is a huge lift. As we mentioned, Mershon's been so hard to get back to the bench. That's a huge pitch for Cags right there with two strikes, one two count, change up down in the zone. Oh, sorry, excuse me, a little cut slider down in the zone and got him in four pitches. Actually, talked to Coach Kopp before the game, the Gators pitching coach. Mershon saw 57 pitches in two days, which is not efficient for the pitching staff for the Gators with their number two hole hitter in the Bulldogs lineup. Got him out in four pitches there. It's a great start to the game for Cags. And here's the toughest of them all Dakota Jordan, the sophomore. Four for eight in the series and two home runs have him at 14 now on the season. And he's the guy you got to mix that change up to like you saw in that first pitch. Jack Caglione in the Sunday orange as usual. Deals outside one ball one strike. We're so used to seeing Caglione's offensive numbers near the top of the league categories slash standings to see him as a pitcher now with similar rankings is awfully impressive just to give you a sample he comes into the weekend sixth in the southeastern conference in earn run average he's number one in opposing batting average 130 coming into this start he also leads the league coming into the weekend and hits allowed at 12 and Earn runs allowed. He's second at five. That's it. Five so far on the year. Strikeout to walk ratio is healthy. Obviously, we talked about the opponent batting average leading the conference. 2-1 to Jordan. Blasted to buy him at 95 miles an hour. Yeah, so showed him the changeup. Got him thinking off speed and then just blew that one on the outer, outer third right there. Get him the chase. Now, as much as Caglione's at the top, pitching-wise, Jordan offensively. And we'll see where they locate here, BT, on Jordan in a 3-2 count. Now, let's see if they start the runner here, 3-2. Four stolen bases for Larry this year. He's got a lean to him, and he'll draw a throw. Yeah, Gators thinking they may do something here. If I'm Coach Lamonis, I'm looking at the success that we've had running for the last two days, and I'm sticking with it. I'm putting the pressure on the Gators' defense. There goes the runner, and a foul off the bat of Jordan. So Larry will get back to first base. New baseball for Cangleone. 31 strikeouts for Jordan. you got to take that in consideration here, but 
again, you're a team that runs. You can't. You got to be fearless. Be aggressive. That's what uh, got him that win yesterday. Runner stays this time. Might be two. Perfectly tailored for a Shelton to curl and Heyman double play, but oh, just too quick down the line was Jordan. And there are two outs, and Jordan will trade places here with Amani Larry, who's retired at second. Yeah, you know, when you have a good runner in the box like that, obviously he. He runs well down the line, but that's a perfect pitch to run for a hitter out of the box, too. Slider down in the way, just kind of tap it with two strikes, don't strike out, and he's moving down the line. So that was a tough double play to turn. I'm a little surprised that Shelton didn't take it himself with the bag. He was moving to his left. Yeah, it was kind of moving more left, kind of in, in front of him, moving up, and uh, that would have been a tough double play okay. to turn by himself. But I think it was the right call by flipping. Shelton will flip to the other side of the bag, and the Gators will shift here to the right side for Hunter Hines. Hines comes into the game at 45 home runs for his career. It's tied for eighth all time in Mississippi State. One more would match him with Richard Lee for seventh place. Yeah, tied with Tommy Raffo, the Arkansas State coach right now. Tommy was a great hitter for Ron Polk back in the day. Coach Polk has been great to see here this weekend. Obviously a legend in the game. To see him in person has been super special. 1-1 one, one from Cagliano, right at Heyman. No problem with that hit by coming in the upper 80s on Gator hitters. Colby Shelton to lead it off. And Gator shortstop takes strike one. And Colby's a guy Gators need to get going. Big part of this lineup. 0 for 6 in the series and quickly in a hole here, 0-2. Five games now he served as the leadoff hitter in the Gators lineup. He's three for 19 in that stretch. He has walked five times since becoming the leadoff man in the lineup. That was the beginning of the LSU series. One, two from Ligon. Into the shift right side. And out at first on the third baseman's throw. That's, of course, Chester again today. Shelton retired. He's 0 for 7 in the series. There's Nate Chester. He started yesterday and came in with a light bat to the weekend, but did get a base hit, and he lined out in another plate appearance yesterday or last evening. And because of that, he's right back American in there. Back in there. Yeah. Well, Ty Evans is red hot. Three for eight in this series alone. His last 16 games, though, have been over 430 batting average. That's a generous call right yeah, there. Yeah, it was. Now well, play him a step to the other way in the outfield. Here's the 1-1. One, one. And this one shot straight out to center field. High sack drifting to his left. Is there for out number two. And that'll bring up Jack Caglione. And his bat has not suffered on days that he's pitched. Been just as effective if and when he's done pitching today. He'll stay in the lineup as the designated hitter. And the first from Ligon is that changeup just off the outer edge. Yeah, they've been pounding Jack inside and getting him to bite. Let's we'll see if they continue to do that. Not today. You know, that wind blowing out there, too, is going to make it switch how you pitch guys as well. Yeah, it's blown out to right field here this afternoon, gusting to 14 miles an hour. And back to your point, John. I mean, Cags has been so exceptional whenever he pitches in the box. I don't know if it's like a subconscious thing where he's not really thinking about his hitting and really focused on what he's doing on the mound, but he has been exceptional in the box whenever he's pitching. And draws a four-pitch walk, and the Gators have their first base runner. So each side's had somebody on board here in the opening frame. Normally you would say the two-out walk's a bad thing, but that guy right there remembers Cags giving up two home runs to him a year ago, so... He's thinking a walk's better than a home run, I guess. Yeah, memory serves well yeah, sometimes. Right? The first inning is still the best scoring inning for the Gators this year. 40 runs scored in the first. Four runs better than the 36 scored in the eighth. Here's Shellnut. 
And he comes into today's game with a team high 13 game streak of reaching base. Yeah, not indicative of a, a, a batting average of just 293. That's a good batting average, but he's playing up more than that. Thought about it, takes strike two. And a lot of shell nuts out too have been super loud or just missed balls in the outfield. I mean, he's had really good quality at bats. He's cut down on his strikeouts, and he's being that guy in the heart of the order that the Gators need, just putting together quality at bats day after day. A single in this series. The one hit came in the fourth yesterday. And he shoots one past Taylor Black in the third base coach's box. I was kidding those guys yesterday, Evans and Shelnut. I said, what's it like hitting BP after Cags hits? And you guys are power hitters. He go, they go, we don't feel like power hitters after getting in after what he does. <laughs> Humbling. Modest lead at first as Ligon comes set. Try the 0-2 again. A little tall. A little off the outer edge. So we were, we were scheduled to have TBD on Sunday. I mean, that's how the series started. Mississippi State didn't quite know what they wanted to do with their Sunday start. And they land on Ligon here in that role. And it's a thing that's going to be in flux, Nick, for a little bit here for Mississippi State. Yeah, well, Nate Dome is their guy. He's still, I guess, a week or two away from getting back in. He was, he was their ace. They've been using Evan Sierra, who will be in long relief today. So they've been kind of piecing it together until Dome gets back. Shift to the left side, 2-2 pitch, right into the shift. Chester, the third baseman's got it all the way across. And the Gators, like the Bulldogs, leave a runner on a sack. And a strike to start him. It, hit by pitch is the only base runner so far for State. It's a pretty one on the inside edge. One ball, one strike. So. This is game 27 for Florida, gentlemen, and we'll call it the halfway point here. It pretty much happens here, you know, today, Tuesday, whatever, as Evans is going to have a look here down the line, and uh, as usual, he's always so good toward the line, Evans puts it away. Fullwell knows that wall closes in on him closer and closer as he gets toward the foul pole, one away. So 26 games in last year, the Gators pitching staff earn run average was 4.52. Through 26 games this year, the Gators pitching staff earn run average, that's collectively, is a 6.09. First pitch swinging. Downs is hoping it gets out of play and it bounces on top of the Gators dugout. Yeah, there's a lot to be said about that earn run average. I mean, obviously, you've seen a step up from Caglion this year. Um, he's really solidified that. <laughs> I mean, he's a Sunday guy, but in reality, he's the, the ace on the Gators staff this year. Um, but they had to fill two really good spots out of the starting rotation. They had to fill Brandon, the, Brandon Sprode's spot and Hurston Waldrop's spot. And those are two tough guys to follow up now. We talked about it yesterday, Sean, that the Gators were the only team in baseball last year to start the same three guys throughout the entire baseball season. Yep. Which is pretty remarkable, and, and it's very tough to see nowadays. Strikeout a, number two for Cags. And yeah. there, was a, there was a lot changed there's a lot that's changed in the pitchers in the in the pitching staff for for the Gators and it's tough to just replace that you know and, and it's it's there's some growing pains that go along we talked this morning there's 11 new freshman arms in the Gators bullpen as well and on the staff so there's a lot of things that have changed with the Gators this year and it's a new staff they're gonna have to learn well, Nick, the point you made more so last year, obviously, because it was it was the story and it and almost played all the way through to fruition. And that is, you know, last year as Chance shoots this one down the right side, Evans is going to give a full sprint at it and he got it before running out of room. Well, pick on Polk is one of the legend coaches in all of college baseball history and a great, great judge of talent. The Nick. godfather of the SEC. Many call him that. Yes. Challenged the NCA many years about the lack of scholarships and uh, you know, just just took up the battle for college baseball year after year. It was a coach of Rafael Palmeiro, Will Clark, Lightning and Thunder. Saw that ESPN documentary. It's oh. outstanding. And a great, great uh, judge of talent. You know how I know? He recruited me at Georgia when he was at Georgia Southern. All that needs to be said. That's it. 
Kate Curl was a good two strike hitter yesterday. He lays off that one low and away. Kate had a pair of hits in game two of the series. And he's here to lead off the bottom of the second for the Gators against Carson Liggett. Luke Campbell will be next, then Dale Thomas. First strikeout for Ligon. Through 26 games, we'll go back to this, com this comparison from last year. Through 26 games last year, the Gators had struck out 189 times as a team. Not gonna say how many BTs was responsible for. This year, guys, 245. So 189 to 245, the same juncture in the year. That's a nasty slider he just threw to Curlin. So the biggest thing for me is obviously you lose a bunch of guys like a Wyatt Langford, Josh Rivera um, in the lineup every single day. But I think the biggest thing for me is that you have a Luke Heyman and a Cade Curlin last year. Both had really good years, hit just at or right over 300 with 10 plus home runs. Each of them did. And this is the year where there's the scouting reports out on them. They know how to pitch to them. They know where their flaws are, where their holes are in their swing. And this is their sophomore season, both of them, where they're going to have to learn and adapt and, and morph their own mindset and their own approach. Uh, kind of like that chess game that you play with each other. They made an adjustment. Now it's my time to make an adjustment. So we'll see if, if Luke Heyman continues to do that and Curlin does it as well. 3-0 look here for Heyman. And that is ball four. So Heyman's aboard. Good news for him. You know, He's looking to get out of that sophomore swoon that you're referring to. In his last 10 games, Heyman's 5 for 40. And was walked just two times in the last 10 games, but is aboard here with one out with a walk. And you'll take it. You know, that 5 for 40 doesn't sound too good, but there is, there is a hot, cold, hot method to it where you're hot at the beginning of the season, you feel good, you go through a little bit of a cold stretch, and then you get hot towards the end when it matters the most. So hopefully he follows that trend, which is, you know, seemed to be the best trend, whether either either be for an entire team success or individually. So we'll see if he does that. Del Thomas did not play yesterday as a starter. He is back in the starting nine today. 0 for 2 on Friday. It's kind of a weird foul ball, but nothing in two now to the Gators third baseman. Asked him how his energy was. What's the vibe? And he said, well, for me, always. I said, Dale, maybe you can be contagious. The kid's an energizer bunny. Always. Which is great. That's that's the spark plug that the Gators need. They need a leader. They need a vocal guy in the in the group. And, you know, not only just saying it every single day, but sometimes you just have to shut your mouth and just put put up some, uh, some numbers as well and, and some performance. That's what the team needs as well. Into right center field. High sack. In the gap. Runs past his teammate and makes the catch on the track. I was really hoping... Again, that's 2D as we're looking at it on the monitor there, that there was enough space between him and Jordan because that collision would have been nasty. That would have been really bad. Yeah, let me tell you something. Jordan, you don't want to get hit by him. I was watching Dakota Jordan play high school defensive back last night on video, and he laid some people out, and I kidded him about it today. I said, man, you hit some people. He said, yes, sir, I did. He was a running back defensive back in high school and went to Mississippi State on a football and baseball scholarship. He keeps hitting like he does. Uh, the choice will be Major League Baseball at some point here. So here's Garrison. We highlighted him on the lineup card today. And he's out in front, two balls and no strikes. Garrison hit his first Gators home run on Friday night. Ligon with the 2-0. Inside corner. That's a corner that's been uh, given here by the home plate umpire Eddie Newsom to both starting pitchers thus far. And that's all you ask for for an umpire. Just keep it consistent and that, that way the hitter knows what's going on. Teammates call him Gary. He's ready for a 2-1. Ligon kicks and delivers. Well, he just missed on that one. Well, Ligon right now is already ahead of where he was a year ago. He gave up a home run to Cags, a two-run homer in the first inning when they Pitch for Miami on the Saturday game of that series that last year in Gainesville. Series, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it was chippy. Oh, yeah. Literally from Jump Street, too, in the, <laughs> the top of the first inning on Friday. <laughs> I remember Cags round in third. That was a little controversial. Then their kid Sear doing the U sign running around the bases. Yes. That didn't go over very well. That was really the first of our big, big crowds last year. There was plenty to follow. So two walks in the inning as Heyman and Garrison 
have both reached via base on balls. And Chuck Geraliman will get to talk to Jalen Guy as Mississippi State has sent Long out to talk to Ligon on the mound. If I'm Long right here, I'm saying you absolutely have to go after Jalen Guy right here. You can't pitch around him or try to be too cute and get a strikeout and you end up with a walk because I know Colby Shelton's been cold this weekend, but that's still one of the better hitters in the, in the entire country, and the last thing you want to have is him with bases loaded. Ligon only walked two in six innings last year, and, and in seven innings the year before against the, the Gators, didn't walk anybody. So how about that? Two, two already in this inning and one last inning. Play him straight up on the infield, and the 200 hitter takes strike one on the outside corner. A veteran and has a veteran presence around him transferring into Florida this year to kind of help the upper end with regard to um, age on this roster. Yeah, age is great. Age is, is experience. You know, that's a veteran guy on the outfield that you can trust every single day. He'll run through a wall for you to go catch a ball and you know, start stacking some quality at-bats together is what they're looking for out of guy here. So Ligon with two outs is a strike away from wiggling out of this two walk situation. Good slider right there. Let's see if they come right back to it. Transfer from Liberty. Rounds it right back off of Ligon. Scrambles, lobs it over, and Mike Rivera. We're set to go in the third, and a foul off the bat of Nate Chester, the eight hole hitter for Mississippi State. Junior from Kansas City, Missouri. Got the start yesterday, had just two hits on the season going into yesterday. Picked up his third and also an RBI. Cags out in front again. O2, Garrison wanted it outside, it's low and away. This is gonna be one of those games where Looking at a trend of a low scoring game. I know both sides have their bullpen set the way they want. Try it again. It's funny you say that, Nick, because normally Sundays are the complete opposite. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, and Chris Lamona says we got all our guys ready to go that we, we didn't use that much on uh, Friday night. Out to Jalen Guy in center field. One gone. And that's why it was so important for Sanger to go as long as he did last night because they did use all of their main components in the bullpen on Friday. And if they had to have a close game yesterday and they had to use them or, or potentially lose that game and lose the series, I mean, that was so huge for them to use Sanger for eight innings last night and save their bullpen for today in a rubber match. Last of the Bulldog nine, here's the catcher, Johnny Long. And he'll lift this one up, foul territory. Garrison's going to give it a look, and it will be out of play. So just three regular season Sundays at home left. Right. To come see Jack Caglione pitch. That'd be April the 14th. South Carolina's here that weekend. That's Master Sunday, isn't it? It is. It is. It is. Yes, it is. BT's got the Azaleas on today. Very, <laughs> very good look here on Easter it. Sunday. Nothing in two here to long. Uh, then on May the 4th, Gators are home on Sunday against Tennessee. The 0 2. I believe that's a Saturday. That's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday it series. Is. Yes, it is. Saturday. On Star Wars Day, right? May, yes. May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Well yeah. done. You are on it, brother. And then the home regular season finale is May the 12th against Kentucky. Long stays alive here. Count remains nothing in two. Just three home series left. It's amazing. Weekend series. Next to Johnny Long. Hit him on the elbow. Ooh. Left the elbow and out over the plate, and all the fingers and the Gators' dugout pointing, pointing toward the home plate area. And Kevin looked, O'Sullivan's out to talk to Eddie Newsom. I don't want to, I don't want to make the call here, but it most definitely looked like he leaned into that pitch a little bit. I'd, I'm for sure, yeah, they're going to take a look at it. Really. We get the super slow mo look here. Oh, he sticks his elbow out for sure and uses that elbow guard. Yeah. I mean, uh, all right. So the way they rule this is. What initiates the contact, the pitcher or the player? The player. Here's the right, result. Right. After further review, the ruling on the field has been overturned. 
The batter leaves the pitch. We will add one strike to the count. Florida retains their challenge. And again, the criteria is who initiates the contact. If the player initiates a contact, which we saw right there, then you're going to bring that back. So he's now out on strikes. It was an 0-2 count. That counts as a strike, so Long is now strikeout victim number three. And Jack's just figuring out that, that Long's no longer hitting. He said, oh, new guy, okay. New guys, top of the order. Amani Larry, two gone, nobody on. Scoreless game here in the top of the third. Boy, the reaction from the Gators dugout was immediate and explosive. Now that's something as a pitcher that kind of gives you some some confidence right there too, and get your get you going a little bit. And the crowd just got involved too. That was awesome. Nobody was happy for a while. Larry was hit by a pitch on his right elbow his first time up. Hello, Mr. Changeup. Yikes, one, two. And once again, talked about Larry yesterday where he's kind of stepping towards the plate when he's hitting. It's called crashing on your front side, which leaves him susceptible to get hit by those pitches inside. See you later. One, two, three for the end of the shift. Grounded out 5-3 his first time up. Scott Snyder, our producer and director today. Jeremy Otter, who was our producer and director yesterday, delivered, via, uh, thanks to all of our great SEC Plus crew, Gator Vision crew here, the candy that we uh, had in our open. And now Shelton's going to wear that one, and that's not reviewable. And a little look at the mound once, twice for Mr. Shelton. Well, rubber game of the series that's going to get a little spicy. Back to the candy for a moment. Uh, the two packages of Peeps after our conversation yesterday. And then I said that jelly beans were number one on my list. They were delivered today thanks to our crew. Mm. And Steve Egan, our statistician, brought in the Reese's peanut butter eggs as well. We're yeah, equipped. B BT and I made a trade. I got his Peeps for my Reese's, so it's a trade that benefits so both win. sides. Benefits both sides. Most so so rare win. these days. Yeah. Everybody's happy up in the booth today. Trainer Jared Schwein checked on Shelton. He's okay, and Colby's already off the bag at first as Ty Evans comes to the plate. So the goal here is get some traffic on the base pass before Caglione comes up, and now Evans gets hit by a pitch. And square in the back. Yeah, going to get spicy here this afternoon. Obviously a little I spicy think, right now, but what? he's not trying to do that no, by Lincoln's no, face right no. there. He's not happy with himself. Yeah, Off-speed pitch. I'm just going to say the, the initial reaction we got on the great camera shot was that he had never intended to plunk Ty Evans. Yeah. Why would you want to set it up yeah, for a catch? Exactly. Now watch the grip here, guys. It's a change-up grip. He, he, mm. And you're going to get a change-up. And, you know, it's a change-up that gets you on the small of the back, yeah, it's not going to hurt that bad. I always thought the ones that are a little bit slower that you can see come the entire way, it doesn't really surprise you. It's going to hit you hurt the worst. Maybe that's just me being soft. Now, remember what's going through Ligon's mind. The guy he's getting in the box right now, he surrendered two home runs to a year ago in this ballpark. So he just got the first two guys on by his doing, and he's got to face the guy that turned him around. And the first home run Cags hit against him last year, he pulled it to right field, and that's where the wind's blowing. Jack's sitting on 12 home runs. Nobody out here in the third inning. That's one he might like to look at again. 88 Maybe. miles an hour right down the heart. Yeah, if he was sitting on that one, he would have ambushed that one. Start him with a change, John. Again, we said his change is kind of upper 80s, so. Yeah, everything's hard. His fastball's mid 90s, change up around 88 to 90 miles an hour along with the slider. Lifted high out into center field. The wind's pushing it to the gap, and that means Jordan calls off. High sack makes the catch. Tagging at second, Shelton advances to third. So he'll be at the corners with one out. Kags gets the job done and puts this runner. 90 feet away with less than two outs. Yeah, at worst, it's a productive out. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Nick Belmonte's favorite bullpen man at Mississippi State is 
Yes, he Cam is. Schulke, and he is throwing alongside Evan Cieri. Wouldn't be surprised if the Gators trying to steal a bag over there, eliminate the double play with Lagone from, you know, 1-4 to 1-5 to the plate with, with any pitches that he throw, and the catchers have not been successful throwing runners out this season, too. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see a little action moving. Evans has one this year, and he takes his lead from first. He's being held on by Hines. So there's a hole on the right side here for Shellnut. Another throw over by Ligon. They're thinking the same thing. Bulldogs finishing a seven game road trip today. Here's that hole on the right side. See if Shellnut can shoot one through. And that's the other thing you have to consider. The hole on the right side, Kevin O'Sullivan says, you know what, he's pitching him away. Let's leave that side open. That was a 1-2-5 to home right there on Lincoln, so pretty pretty good. A one delivery. In the dirt and away from Long. Here comes the runner from third. Head first slide, and Shelton scores the first run of the game for the Gators. Great job of base running by Shelton. Anticipated the ball in the dirt. As soon as it squirted away, he was off and running. Aggressive play, nicely done. Long's been a good receiver all weekend long. This just takes an unfortunate kick off his wrist. Yeah, unfortunate kick off his wrist. You know, he's one of the more athletic catchers you'll see in college baseball, the way he moves behind the plate. And, you know, I've always been told if you can block the balls between the white lines right there, you're in pretty good shape. Anything outside, you're not really responsible for. That just happened to be one in the middle, you know, between those lines that kicked off a bad place and, and got a run for the Gators. So an unfortunate thing for a catcher. Rightly scored as a wild pitch. On the backside of that play, Evans advanced to second base. 2 1. Walked him. Well, wait a minute. Shelton thinks he walked. Our count and home point umpire Eddie Newsom's count, the one that counts the most, makes this three balls in one strike. Now, you know you don't want. Yeah, we'll probably, no, gonna, like probably get a home run now. Yeah. That's one. That's one. That's not an attempt. Disengagement, throw to second. Shulky and Sierra. Now, Sierra's a the guy they've been using for multiple innings. Line drive into left. Taylor Black will hold the runner Evans at third base. Shellnuts. Team high streak runs to 14 games, reaching safely. See, now he's glad that wasn't ball four. Gets now, a knock, it gets the runner over to third. Yeah, great piece of hitting right there. But, you know, with Ty Evans right there, the wind's blowing, you know, kind of in or out to right field from the left field side. And you got to know where the guy's playing out in left field. He's playing deep. That ball's down all day long. He should have scored, in my opinion. Justin Parker is out of the third base dugout on his way to the mound. Up the lone strikeout for the starter. Carson Liggett. And you can see where that ball is right there. That that speaks of hitting the ball on the ground. And that's why he's brought in in this situation. Curling up to 300 with that batting average. A pair of hits yesterday. Off the handle, scores foul to the third base dugout. Marty Smith is coach at Central Florida Community College where they won the World Series. In his press conference after he threw 100 pitches he said, I could throw another 100, and I did that three years ago. And, and Marty Smith said, well, your coach should be arrested. He said, well, that's my dad. Yanked foul. And then Marty, Marty Smith realized that he was talking about his father when he said his coach should be arrested. He had a good laugh about it. But the, he is one of those guys on your ball club. You can use him for two innings, three innings, one hitter, multiple days in a row. you got to have guys like him. Kerwin looking for RBI number 19. It's 90 feet away. Popped him up. Long the catcher tosses the mask and makes a nice catch as that breeze was blowing it away from him along the third base dugout. Yeah, and there are two play. outs. I mean, that's one of those. I would think it'd be easier for a third baseman to call him off right there. That's a lot of running. 
that the catcher had to do on that. Absolutely. The only the only positive thing about that for a catcher to catch it is because of the wind blowing right now. Kind of out to you know center, right center, right field, kind of shifting a little bit right now where the ball is blowing back into play for him and right into his glove. So that was a good play by Long. Tough play. And, and had to, yeah, had to outstretch to get that. Not, not easy to backhand with a catcher's mitt. Well, the Gators are going to have more than run, one run in this inning. It's up to Luke Heyman. Well, that, there's, there's that move to first base. And yes. I guarantee you, talking to Mike Rivera about his pickoff move after uh, Friday's game, he goes, yeah, we're going to sit pretty close to the base with him out there. Shellnut eases off the first base bag. Sidearm breaking ball, misses down and in. So usually a guy with a herky-jerky windup like that, if he does go home and you take off, you're going to get a good jump on him because those are long delivery times. But you've got to respect his athleticism and his move to first base. Heyman walked his first time up. Another snap throw over to first. <laughs> so That's nasty. So the times to first base, if you're a sub one pickoff time from when you first make your move to when it hits the glove at first base, if you're a sub one second, pickoff that's pretty good so if you're if you're a point eight to a one you're really good and the kids accurate too that's some of the best in, in quickest feet in baseball I've seen one oh from the right hander almost got him and yeah, that was a one three to home on that delivery no, he's definitely a sub one on his throw to first you got to respect it over there two oh Got him. They didn't roll it hit by pitch. I thought it went off the shin guard to him. Yeah, that hit off the back of his leg. I thought so. Well, right Evans now. Evans raced home, and now Eddie Newsom has called time. Yeah, right now Eddie That's Newsom is just saying, let it play. <laughs> That's good acting by Heyman right there. Tried to sell it. Mississippi State is challenging the call of the field. The call of the field is no hit by pitch. Not often do you get a no hit by pitch. Heyman knows where this is going to go. He's already tossed his bat and get ready to yeah. go to first base. He tried so. to sell it, walk back to the plate, though. <laughs> he knows it's not going to lie right here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right on the Achilles tendon there. Fake it till you make it. Uh, Heyman already started discarding his bat, and he said, oh, no, hang on, just in case. Yeah, I was just getting out of the way. Well, we already know what the result of this review is going to be. After review, the call of the field has been overturned. It is a hit by pitch. Batman grants first base. Runner returns to third. Mississippi State retains their challenge. Mississippi State's questioning why they even had to challenge in the first place. Well, it's times like that where you're glad that there's replay because it seems Absolutely. pretty obvious. So now they're loaded here. There's a Gator on every base, and Dale Thomas with six runs batted in. Steps in on the right side. Schulke sidearm at the knees for a strike. I do wonder a little bit as Schulke's a senior, does this unique skill set, great elite time to first base, three different arm slots, 10 pitches in his arsenal, does that translate to pro ball? Not exactly sure. I mean, there's so many good hitters in professional baseball that make adjustments as well as anybody. I mean, that's why they are professionals. Well, Darren O'Day through like that and got to the big leagues and the bullpen's named after him so point taken that's a nasty one right there to make it one and two you know as an offensive group putting together a plan to face a pitching staff and to face a pitcher like Schulke I mean you're preparing to face three different guys in one at bat you don't know which guy you're going to get on which pitch and it's a really tough uh, really tough pitcher to face one two Check swing. No, says the first base umpire, Danny Cricks. That was a borderline call right there. And luckily for Dale, he didn't ring him up. Let's see what he does here. Just in borderline. time. Borderline. Just in time. <laughs> One run in on the inning. Base is loaded. 2-2. Two -two. Get out of play. Long's going to have room. And two Gators go down on pop-ups and foul territory to the Gators. They get one run on one hit. Three batters hit by pitch, and the Gators leave them loaded in the bottom of the third inning. Amani Larry with a pitch to begin the game. So he'll face David Mershon here, strikeout victim. His first time up to start things in the fourth. 
Four strikeouts already for Caglione. 1 0. Charging. Thomas sends it across. And a nice backhand pull up there by Luke Heyman. One gone. And we're, we're, after an eight pitch inning in the second, he retired him one, two, three in the third, and he's only a couple pitches in here to the fourth. And we talk about Sundays in the SEC, usually a high scoring affair. Now, we played three complete innings. There's been one hit in this ballgame. But beware. <laughs> beware of the fourth inning. Nine runs scored in the fourth inning this weekend already by Mississippi State. And you get Jordan to pop up now. And Heyman will call off Kags and has out number two. So by any measure, really, the toughest two outs to get in the Mississippi lineup, Mississippi State lineup this weekend, Rashawn and Jordan, have both been set down here to start mm -hmm. the fourth. And, you know, they did that Friday. You know, majority of the hits were from the bottom half of the lineup and guys that were on base and the traffic was the bottom half of the lineup for the Bulldogs. Yesterday, obviously, they put up 11 runs on the board and their best hitters did all the damage yesterday. Dakota, Dakota Jordan had a great game. Isaac had a great game. So that's that's really the key for it. You got to get you got to get the best guys out and eliminate them on base and, and get the guys at the bottom of the order that you should get out. Hines hit a sharp ground ball to Heyman and he took it himself. Heyman guarding the line at first. Here's the 0-2. And you got to think about this, too. Ligon gave up five freebies, but only gave up one run. So kind of got, got off the hook there. Yeah, Schulke bailed him out for sure. This with a change up there. 2-2 count. Hines is one of the two guys in the Bulldog lineup today that can swing from the left side. The others are the switch hitter, Mershon. Swing and a miss down on strikes is Hunter Hines. Fifth and induced two pop outs in foul territory caught by his catcher. We've seen a little bit of everything this weekend. We've seen the ambidextrous pitcher. We've seen the walk off. We've seen a blowout. We've seen the two pop ups in foul territory last inning. Seen a lot of firsts. And you know what one of the coolest firsts for me is? Is the orange top that Taylor Black is wearing in the third base box right there, the coach's box. It's, it's the new addition for the Gators this year is the orange on Sundays. Uh, they've had it for the players, but for the coaches, it's pretty cool. Yeah, but if we can get to the orange to shoes tilt down, too, yeah. yes, that's the, that's the fire part of that kit. There yes, you go. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. Great habiliment. You know what he needs with that on Sunday? Some orange peeps. Do they exist? Garrison, one hops it. To Mershon. He's been automatic this weekend. One gone here in the Gator fourth. And adding to the interesting people of the week is the guy on the mound right now with the nine different deliveries. Yeah, so I, I posed the question when he came in on whether or not the different arm slots, the 10 pitch arsenal, the elite pickoff move to first base, does it translate to Pro Bowl? He's a senior as Jalen Guy is ready to see his first from Schulke. And that Frisbee's in there for a strike. And, and if he does that and he can throw hitters timing off, I think he gets a shot. And then just to see how far he can go. A guy like him is needed in the minor leagues anyway, speaking as a former minor league manager, because that's a guy that could save your bullpen in the course of a year. Now, when Darren O'Day got in, in, the, uh, in, in minor league baseball, it was one of those deals where how far is Darren O'Day going to go? Well, he got to the big leagues and had a long big league career in a similar pitching style. Now, Darren occasionally would throw above 90, but he made his bread and butter on stuff just like this. From a player development standpoint as well. Oh, that's a rocket stab by Chester at third, robbing Jalen Guy of his first hit today. Man, that's a heck of a play from Chester over there. I mean, you know, you, your best guy and your best reaction guy within about a foot or two of his right and left needs to be at third base, and they definitely figured it out by putting Chester at third base. There was a heck of a stab. And that's what they call that position, a reaction position, third base. On, you get some P-rods hit down at you. And to go back to Schulke a little bit, too, and, and to your point, Nick, uh, even if he isn't a professional guy where he does make it up to big league camp, he is so valuable to have within a farm system. So 
whenever their best prospects in, within the organization do face other teams with guys like Schulke, he's there to give them the ability to see that every single day and understand how he thinks and, and the way he's throwing and, and all those things. So it's very valuable to have on your team to learn from those guys so whenever you're hitting, it's easier or a little bit easier to hit anyway when you're facing somebody else. So he's a human pitch sim simulator. He's a simulator, yeah, that's okay. right. I had a guy like him in Salt Lake City when I managed a kid out of uh, University of Central Florida through like him. Not not that many different angles, but you know, it was a guy you could could use. And, and a kid that Ron Polk, a pitcher that Ron Polk recommended me by the name of Harden was a, was a relief pitcher. Funny, Ron's in this ballpark today out of Mississippi State, and he pitched for me in Salt Lake City. He had similar delivery. Again, not all the different angles, but he was down under soft tosser, and he was effective. Shelton hit by a pitch his last time up. Takes it outside. Colby also represents the lone run scored in this game. Two gone here in the fourth. Let's see if he gives us Kent to Colby. There it is. <laughs> Trying to get through up the middle. Vershawn again with that range. Retired dogs. Uh, looking to get a road win series. That is like their weight in gold right now in this conference schedule. Jack Caglione back to work. And the first hit of the day for Mississippi State. Guy will cut it off in the left center field gap. Trying to get to the throw. Not in time. Connor Heisack with the leadoff single here in the top of the fifth inning. Yeah, Heisack must have been sitting on it right there. Yeah, go ahead. Got a little change up right over the middle of the plate, first pitch of the inning, and just stayed right on it, stayed through the ball, hit it out in the gap, and a little hustle double for him. That was a really good piece of hitting to start off the inning for the Bulldogs. First base runner for State since the very first hitter of the game. Monty Larry was hit by a pitch. Now, old, old school baseball says you got to move him over to third base here. Old school drops a bunt right in front of home plate. Runner will move. Garrison gets the runner at first. And so with one out, they've got a tying run 90 feet away. Sack bunt, 2-3. Did his job. Got him down there less than two outs, and that's the name of the game right there. Move him along, and now they got two shots at it. Let's see what Sully does with his infield here. They're on the creep. And Kevin O'Sullivan is on his way to the mound. So they're going to creep even further and meet up with Kags. O'Sullivan and Garrison on the mound here with Bryce Chance, the designated hitter, coming. So Chance will come up. The meeting at the mound is over. The infield is in on the edge of the grass. So kind of sensing maybe a low scoring game here today. Kevin O'Sullivan very concerned about that runner 90 feet away. Hitter's looking for something he can elevate here. He flew out to right, Chance did, his first time up. Sent Ty Evans all the way to the right field line to make the play. He does have two sacrifice flies on the season. 1-1 from Caglione. Back down the right field way. Evans on his horse, won't get to it. They had to wait and tag at third, but they eventually get Heisack across. And that's two hits of the inning now, and Bryce Chance has his 22nd run batted in. We're tied at one. That's exactly what you're looking for at a chance at the bottom of the order. I mean, just you get something over the middle of the plate. It's called first available. Not necessarily a certain pitch he's hunting, but he got a fastball over the middle of the plate. Just try to get it to the outfield because the infield was in. Did his job right there and got a run on the board for the Bulldogs to tie up the game. So now the eight-hole hitter, Nate Chester. And a pickoff in the making here. Heyman throws low, gloved by Shelton. And the rundown now, they're going to get Bryce Chance. Two gone. Each team has lost a runner via pickoff in this series now. Yep, really good job by Heyman. Got a pickoff there. You come and meet the ball, get rid of it as quick as possible. Not the greatest throw in the world. Shelton bailed them out, but, you know, really good job from a rundown. And Got that second out. Well, that's big, and now Chester for, takes strike one. For me, when that happens on a base runner, I, I would tell my guys, keep going a second. Get in line with the, the defensive player. Try to get the first baseman to throw around you. Absolutely. Because you, you stop like that in a rundown at this level of competition, you're going to be out 95% of the time.
Nothing in two after the appeal of the check swing. Wouldn't chase. Johnny Long is on deck. Cags would rather see him in the sixth. For a full windup. Popped him up. Jalen Guy got a good look at it right away. And that's the inning. A run, though, on two hits. Nobody left for Mississippi State. They the same guy. It counts. Does it count? You know, yes. Okay. Okay. I'm still going under. Okay, we're sitting on four, right? That is four. Oh, my gosh. Stop showing him, Scott. Ty Evans hit by pitch his first time up. Two, three, four in the Gators lineup. I'll tell you some SEC history. Ole Miss used to have a pitcher named Michael Myers. And, you know, from the Halloween, same name. Well, this guy would stand up every inning he pitched with a Michael Myers hat, mask on. And it would be like 100 degrees humidity. And the guy would stand up there the entire half inning. And obviously we'd be getting all kind of TV shots on the guy. And he followed the guy throughout his pro career, too. But this is a big Ole Miss thing. You could probably Google it and see pictures of this guy doing it at the Ole Miss field. Pop down the left side. A couple of Bulldogs give chase here, including Chester, and it will be a souvenir on the berm. And he would show up on the other side of left field only the half inning that when Myers pitched. So it'd be creepy. Yeah. And then and then he'd leave. It's stalking is what it is. It's exactly what yes, it was. Yes. So did it's, they have it's called what it is. Did they have walkout songs? They did the they went they did the Halloween thing when he Perfect. came out to pitch. That was his warm up song. Perfect. Yes. yes. Cam Schulke in relief of Ligon, the starter. Got Evans down on strikes here to start things in the bottom of the fifth inning. He threw three different sliders in that at bat. <laughs> Satchel Page has nothing on this guy. They always say Satchel Page threw like 10 pitches. Uh, that's the only comparison. Time called here by the catcher. And they're going to intentionally walk Caglione in a 1-1 oh, game totally get with this. nobody on. Oh. Yes. Totally get this. I, I, you know, it's it's funny. When they did this to Barry Bonds a lot the year he broke the home run record, they did it with the bases loaded a couple of times with Barry Bonds. But I get that. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, you look at the splits right now. Schulke's left-handed batters yeah. are hitting almost 400 off him versus righties at 209. And... I mean, with Cags at the plate, you got to think it's above that, too. So maybe not a bad idea. Sheldon lays down a great bunt here to advance Caglione to second. Two gone in the inning. Yeah, I think that's a bunt for a base hit right you there. Think? Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I, I don't think they're sacrificing a one out. Well, no, in I, a one-run game, I just thought get well, the scoring position. That's my only side of it. Usually when you see the foot go back, the right foot all the way mm -hmm. back, that's bunt for a base yep. hit. Okay. And the whole thought process behind getting a guy to second base with two outs, not necessarily as good. I mean, even it, the thought process with so many guys that can run the ball out of the yard now, you don't just want to give up and out either. Well, you two know way more baseball than me. I'm just seeing <laughs> yeah, both just, teams here right. knowing this could be a one-run affair. You yeah. intentionally walk Cags. Gators brought the infield in earlier. I'm conceding the argument. I don't want anybody to think that I'm... <laughs> Gonna <laughs> well, stand on the table here and scream and yell. And, and I also get why Shelley did it too. Yeah. The third baser was practically playing in left field. Yeah. All he had to do is get it down to that side. Can Curlin come through here? One one to him. Good. Definitely do think it was a good thought. Obviously not the greatest bunt for a yeah. hit in no. the world. Like the result wasn't there, but the thought of it was was definitely was great. Yeah, at worst you get the runner over second base and Get him in scoring position. With one of your hotter, hottest hitters of the weekend at the plate right now with a chance to drive in a run. First disengagement for Schulke. Perlin shoots this one into right to the track. Jordan there to make the catch. I thought the wind, which has shifted a little bit, might help. It's Kick back on the jersey? Yeah. Oh, nothing. That's oh, okay. definitely not something you dream of or think of, but it's definitely something cool to see, and I'm very appreciative of that. Caglione working here in the sixth. The only bump on the road for him. A double and a single in the fifth inning. The one run tied it on the RBI single by Bryce Chance. And he's facing nine, one, and two here for the Bulldogs in the sixth inning. And he's fallen behind Johnny Long. 
Coming into this inning, Caglione, 58 pitches, 41 for strikes. Long is 0 for 1. He's one of five strikeout victims of Caglione. Good 3 1, climbing back into the count here. Long's batting average has risen this weekend, up to 255 at the moment. Takes ball four with a little panache. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the first walk issued by Caglione today. In the sixth. Now you might be looking for some kind of a bunt play right here. Monty Larry. Yep. Man on. Larry, yep. 0 for 1. He's been hit by a pitch. Has one sacrifice on the season. Squares. Lays it down. Caglione calls for it. Only plays to first. They get the out there. Sack goes 1-3 on the play. What I liked about that, he showed the bunt early, got his bat angle set correct, and was able to get it down. He gets out there early, which is what I like to see. Catches the ball at the barrel of the bat. He had to go down and get that one, too. And that's an easy pitch for, for a bunter to bunt, something that's low because it's already doing the work for you. The pitch is already down. And it's it's the easiest pitch for me, I think, for a bunter to get down is that low one. So now Mershon is 0 for 2. He showed quickly and pick, pulls it back for a called strike on the fastball. And, Nick, when I was growing up, when I was always taught, taught that you know balls down in the zone you're not moving your bat down you're almost riding the elevator is what they call it absolutely where using your whole body down and into the ball and stay with it and, and it, easy and use the elbows of the uh, the corners of the box right there to you keep your angle at 45 and if you go down to your knee you go down to your knee I, you absolutely know, you know my parochial school training says you genuflect all the way down and and that's that's what you do you you, you stay low to it keep the angle of the bat How much do you pay attention to that runner at second base, Johnny Long? He does have two no, stolen bases. No, on you, no? Do, you do not. No, not with these, two, was, not with these guys hitting. Yeah, Kerwin was uh -uh. way toward the bag, and now he backpedals. A little foul tip into the mid of Garrison. Well, if they can get Mershon here to strike out, I think you're going to see you a little Jordan tip for Tat. You put Jordan on. Go to Hines and play matchup. going to drop and they'll round long around third guys throw is cut Heyman trying to get the second and it's kicked around and the Bulldogs lead it two to one what a hustle play for Mershon right there obviously a guaranteed single on the run scores you know outfielder did it really what he was supposed to do throw it right through his cut and Heyman and Mershon was just fully going out of the box turns the corner and heads the second forces a cut but beats it out to second base I mean that that kid's an all-around player, man. And he fights his pitch off, up and in. He's able to float it in there. And Garrison looking at the dugout to see if they want to pitch to Dakota. 22nd RBI for Mershon, and, and they, they will. Well, hold on a second. Uh, hey, it's undecided yet here. Yeah. Eddie Newsom is uh, trying to direct traffic here at the plate. Kevin O'Sullivan says, yes, I'm walking him. Now I will call time and make a visit to the mound. Okay. A good job. I mean, even with guys have gotten on base and had traffic, he's gotten out of it. I mean, he's only given up two runs on three hits. I think he has three free bases right now, one walk and two hit by pitches. He's done a really good job. This is another good outing for him. The offense really just is, isn't doing it for him right now. And you know what? If the Gators are going to win for me, you have to beat Schulke because they're going to run him until he can't throw anymore. Shift to the right side. Pitch is low to Hines, 2-0. I mean, Schulke's the kind of guy who can get you 80 pitches in a relief appearance. Each time that Schulke has gone out there to pitch for Mississippi State since coming in for Ligon, they've had Tyler Davis at the ready in the bullpen. Popped him up. Infield fly. So everybody stays put here. Two away. You know, I, th I always wish more, especially in the minor leagues, guys would drop the infield fly because a lot of times the base runners don't know the rules and they get they get a little panicky and yep. they just take off. And I've seen that work in the minor leagues where guys drop it on purpose or let it land. You start to learn who knows the rule book and who doesn't. Yeah. And I think in two games that we've done together this year, Nick, we've seen that. Sometimes you can go an entire season without seeing an infield fly rule come into effect. 
We've seen it a couple times now. Here's Connor Heisack. He doubled his last time up. And came around to score there was also State's first run. There was also another situation where you don't really see. It was in the Georgia and Tennessee game yesterday where there was a guy in second and third base, ground ball. They throw the ball home. There was a there was a pickle between third and second, which most people don't know how the rules work. There can only be one guy on a base at a time. And uh, so the third base runner ran back to third base. From that point, the second base runner ran back to second base, and everybody was safe. So they didn't know how to play it. Georgia's defense yeah. didn't, and everybody was safe when it should have been at least one out, maybe two. Yes. 2-0 here. I hate when that happens, and then the runners stay on the base and wait for the guys to tag both of them. I hate that. That guy... That guy that goes from second to third, I always say, you got just go back to second. More throws, the better. And now the bases are loaded. So it's the third walk of the inning game, and then the Gators were able to walk it off. A lot of options, but if you ask me, Caglione's your best option right now. He's warm, he's ready, he's thrown well. He's just got to go out there and get this one guy and finish his inning. And this is here, 1 0 count to Aaron Downs. Downs 0 for 1 plus the sacrifice, but that was a part of their one run fifth inning. Change up, and doesn't have it on that. If you're downs right here, you're sitting fastball. If you get it, go ahead and take a whack. One thing the Kags did in the outing last week was even in this situation here, when change up again, he kind of threw it when they least expected it. He goes fastball as Nick predicted with 95 miles an hour on that delivery, but he's outside for 3 0. Now you're taken here. Yeah, with seven balls in a row right there, even 2-0, I'm taking a pitch. I'm making you throw me a strike. Walked him, and a run scores. RBI for downs, his eighth of the year. Mershon comes in to touch you to make it 3-1, to one, Mississippi State. And Kevin O'Sullivan may not have to make that decision now. It's Bryce Chance. The designated hitter to repeat McNeely pitched the top of the ninth on Friday and struck out the side and he starts chance off with a strike and I know Cags is not happy with that last inning obviously didn't throw as many strikes and walked a few guys that he that he did in the last inning but he really did throw well today I mean he gave him five and two thirds this is a problem Evans racing to the gap plays and he's got it <laughs> Sixth. Gators down by two, three to one. Trying to win this series. Mississippi State keeps the ball in the hands of Schulke. And why not? Through an inning and two thirds, he's kept the Gators at bay. Starts here with Luke Heyman. Six, seven, and eight for the Gators here in the sixth. Just missed the inside corner. Heyman's been aboard twice without the benefit of a hit. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't necessarily take a hit to get out of your little slump that you're in, and hopefully today is the day where he kind of turns around his season. Kind of thought maybe Ty Evans should just come to the plate just by principle after making that catch <laughs> in the 10, the top of the sixth. Got to slow his heart rate down first. Keeps it a 3-1 game. Gators have left six on base today as Heyman chops that one foul. Right now, I can't help but think about the missed opportunity in the third. It's when the Gators scored their lone run on one hit. But they had three hit by pitch and couldn't get more than the one run. Yeah, really good teams take, make the most of other teams' mistakes. And, you know, one run is obviously something you want on the board, but it, it, they left a few runs out there. They've done that a few times tonight and, or today. And, they're looking to tack on right here and even up the game. We have pinch hitter next. 3 2 pitch is ball four. And the catcher long is really upset at the home plate umpire and had to take a walk toward the mound a bit to cool off. Yep, he's, he's letting his pitcher know that he thought this was strike three. And the whole dugout wanted that pitch too. It's one of those borderlines. You could say it was in, you could say it was low. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is Gators got something going. And Armando Albert will come to the plate and pinch hit. 
for Dale Thomas. They're signaling out to third base, be ready for a bunt. And it would be a bunt for a base hit if he does. There are no other left-handed bats down this bottom half of the order. And then the right-handed pitcher up there, Kevin O'Sullivan goes for Albert here. Shelton's a lefty, but that's not until you get back to the top. And Albert's going to wear it. That's the fourth time the Gators have been hit by a pitch. And here's your opportunity. You didn't cash in in the third. You get two aboard here on a walk and hit by pitch. And that was a knuckle scraper there by Shulky. Loaded a ground and plunks Albert. And Gators got some decisions to make here. You, you, you got Garrison up there. Do you bunt him? Do you let him swing away? These are decisions Kevin O'Sullivan's going to have to make right here. The Gators not a big bunting team per se. Five sacrifices going into this ball game. Meeting at the mound here allows these two to finish getting ready again. Both these guys have been up one time already. Davis, the left-hander, and Sierra, the right-hander, is ready to go. Garrison Davis is staying hot. Yeah, he has one sacrifice bun on the air. Let's see how Sully plays this. Garrison squares, pulls it back, ball outside. Walking the ground out for Tanner Garrison. The way they're playing it defensively, you just want to bunt it right at the third baseman. They're crashing the first baseman. Shortstop's covering second. Second base is covering first. So bunt it right down there at the third baseman. Lead runner is Luke Heyman. Garrison pulls it back, takes the strike. Called by Eddie Newsom. And they got Hines crashing from first base. So if you bunt it on that side, he's going to go ahead and sell out and make that throw to third base. Garrison does drop it down. Schulke's play is the first. Nice. One out. Nicely done. I'm going to toot Gary's horn right here. I mean, coming from Coastal Carolina, we worked on that every single day at mid-major schools like Coastal. You really, you really focus on the small ball portion of the game. You try to run the ball out of the yard at a, at a small park like Coastal, but also work on those things. And, you know, to beat some of the best teams in the country, you have to play small ball as well. So you definitely learn from the best one in, in Kevin Schnall over at Coastal. So another pinch hitter now for Kevin O'Sullivan with those runners at second and third, another left-handed bat. So guy who was a right-handed bat is lifted. Hayden Yost will come in now. And the Gators are still looking for their first pinch hit of the season. And Hayden Yost pinch hitting for the Gators here in the nine hole. Third baseman creeping in at third and off the line. Strike one to Yost. Yeah, defensively, they're going to give up a run here with the two run lead. Yost batting 158. The pitch popped out of play off to the left side. The Gators have walked five times today and have been hit by a pitch four times. Florida's only struck out two times in the game. We're in the bottom of the sixth with one out. Florida still just has the one run, even with all that opportunity. Had guys on base, just haven't gotten the big hit that they desperately need. Seven stranded so far. Pitch from Sierra on yeah. the handle and straight back. Yeah, Lincoln got off the hook with the five freebies that he gave up, and it's just one of those scenari scenarios right here. You'll take anything. You know, you'll take a, a duck stored, anything to fall in right here. That would tie the ball game. Texas leaguer. Next from Sierra off the end of the bat. Runner crashing from third. The play over to first. Too late. Everybody's safe. 3 2 ball game. Talk about taking anything, Nick. There it is. Hit a little capper to third. <laughs> Heyman scores. Yost does the job. And on this play right here, Albert, he had to wait. He didn't know how far that ball was going to be hit at second base, so he had to make sure, and it was rightly so, don't sell out because if the third baseman comes back, and holds it, he's going to go after Albert. So I think that was actually a smart play by Albert reading that. Absolutely. Normally they teach you with a chopper, 
to the left side of the infield that takes a third baseman in. You run right behind him. You immediately go and see a throw to first base and see what happens. But absolutely, that was a great job by Albert right there. Now the top of the order, and Colby Shelton is due. He's got a piece of that one. So Yost gets the first pinch hit of the year for the Florida Gators here in game number 27 and an RBI to boot. And that, that'll look just as pretty as a line drive. Yes, you, indeed it will. 3-2 ball game. Tying run in second now. Shelton with a fly ball on the no left. No tag, no tag. Downs without number two. Both runners stay put. Well, he's running on his heels right down in the outfield. Looked like he was having some trouble. He finally corralled it. Shelton still unable to get on track again. And Ty Evans to the plate. And how big is his diving catch <laughs> to end the top of the inning well, to keep it a two-run game at the time, now a one-run game? It'd be 6-2 to two right now if he doesn't make that play. At least six to two. That least. was a yes. basis clearance. Right. Evans hit by a pitch in the third, otherwise 0 for two. Fly out, strike out. Hitting in the two hole here this afternoon. Whiffs on a 74 mile an hour pitch well, from Evan Sierra. You know, slider's his best pitch. With Yost up there, left handed, that kind of negated it. But I, I think you're going to see a steady diet here of that. Hitting 379 on the year. Shoots this one the opposite way. Jordan to the track and makes the catch. End of the inning. So he's faced one batter and he'll face here eight, nine, and one. Strike one to Nate Chester, third baseman. That looked a little low. Chester all for two. Playing for the second time in this series. We did not see Chester on Friday. The Kohler was in the lineup, and uh, same spot, same result. Home plate umpire Eddie Newsom. This this game has definitely solidified himself to want to call that low strike right here. One run game, rubber game of this three game set. 0 2 pitch. That misses. One and two. And funny story about the low part of the zone. I was talking with David Kopp earlier, and he was talking before the game with legendary coach Ron Polk for Mississippi State. Uh, we'll finish it after this pitch right here. Could be a big one. Swinging bunt out front. Garrison gets that first out with a rifle down to first base to Hammond. And he was telling shortstop Mershon from Mississippi State, you need to raise your pants up a little bit higher. Because when your pants up are a little bit higher, it makes it seem as if the low strike, it's not going to be there for you because it's a little bit too low. That's and like then the he said, Dakota Jordan, you keep, your, you keep your pants down. You don't need that you leverage. Need You're leverage. good. I think that's what Bill Vecht told Eddie Goodell back in the day. Might have to Google that one. Pinch hit situation. Nine hole hitter Johnny Long takes strike one. Hard to believe we have reached the last day of March. Again, we said earlier that the Gators are trying to get a winning record for the month. Nine and nine in the month of March. And that means it's also the final day. Final day. Of National Women's History Month. And that's a problem, and it hit the chalk. Oh, I thought it hit the paint down there on the right field line. Ruled foul by Danny Cricks, the first base umpire. Now we'll get a better look. No, good call. Yep. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, contribution by women in the game of baseball. And one you should know from St. Louis, Helene Hathaway Britton, first owner ever of Major League Baseball, 1911 St. Louis Cardinals. Yep. Looks this like is being challenged. The rolling on the field, the call on the field is foul ball. BT Riotpel, very astute on uh, the rule book yesterday. We talked about which foul or fair ball can you challenge. This is a challengeable call. It's foul ball. And a foul ball. Who else is on your list there, Nick? Well, yeah, Joan Payson owned the um, New York Mets in 69 when they won the uh, World Series. Bart shot 90 with the Cincinnati Reds. But in the modern era, Rachel Balkovich is, uh, was a minor league manager in the Yankees in the New York, uh, Florida State League uh, last year and the year before that. Um, 
Maybelle Blair, I got to meet with her from the All-American Women's Girls Baseball League, the famous one. She's still alive and well. Isla Borders pitched for us in the Northern League back in the day, uh, 1993. After review, the pulling up foul ball is confirmed. Mississippi State is charged with their first challenge. They have one remaining. And I've got to work with the great Jane Chastain, one of the first women broadcasters. Uh, it, it, and it was back in, in the 70s, and, and when I was a player, she did a documentary, and she's, she's famous. So a lot of contributions from women in baseball. That's just scratching the surface right there. 0-2 pitch, the nine-hole hitter. Gets past the pitcher. Curlin will finish it. Two gone. Well, we, we've had women as PA announcers in Major League Baseball. Right. We just had a general manager of the Miami Marlins was a woman. Kim Young, yep. Kim just yep. left that job. Yep. yep. Talk a little bit about the women on the Gators baseball team as well. Ann Hughes, the longtime academic advisor for the team. The best in the, the, the best. business. Lexi Ch Stachowski, the dietitian for the Gators baseball team, along with Lindsey Birchfield, one of the athletic trainers, and former Gators athletic trainer Robin Martin, who's yeah. now at Penn State baseball. So many different people that, you know, put their time and, and lives uh, – aside to you know be a part of this program and it's fantastic stuff well how about this miami florida i was a little league eight years old my first coach was marge crumpler a woman so there you go so she started this that's right okay well, monty larry at the plate top of the order and he's hit by a pitch again third time this weekend second time today Two out base runner here in the top of the seventh inning. I'm actually going to be going up to Rockford, Illinois in September to do a clinic with the uh, girls' baseball little league in, in the region. That's going to be uh, sponsored by MLB, so that's going to be fun to do. Yeah, that's great. Home at a Rockford Peaches. By the way, I think Amani Larry just took the SEC lead here in hit by pitch. That's two today to give him 12 on the year. That would pass Paxton Kling at LSU. For the leaderboard. Is that a leaderboard you want to be at the top of? <laughs> Switch hitter David Mershon up on the left side for the first time today. The dubious. Deals outside. Ball one. Mershon singled and eventually scored his last time up. Drove in RBI number 22 in the sixth inning. Two runs for the Bulldogs. Last frame, the only multi-run half inning we've seen today. Ground ball to Curlin, backhanded. Goes to first, long leg stretch out by Heyman, saves the day. And that is the walk hit by pitch today, both sides. And Jack Caglione, who started this game on the mound, is the designated hitter for the Gators, and he is leading off for Florida in the bottom of the seventh. Speaking of walks, he has done so twice, once intentionally. And uh, halfway to another. Evan Sierra is the third pitcher of the day for the Bulldogs. He came in during the sixth. The Gators played in just one run and had a chance for more. And that's been a part of the game summary today. The nine left on base by Florida. I'll go on the appealed swing. Oh, you know he's swinging here, 3-0. Full wind up for Sierra to Cagalione. Walked him. <laughs> Didn't even want to mess with him. Sixth time Florida's walked today. That's respect, 3-0, and you're going to throw him down low. Something to reiterate right here is that, you know, some of the best teams always do a great job of exploiting the weaknesses of another team. And, and I think, you know, you haven't seen a whole lot this weekend for the Bulldogs, but one of their weaknesses is throwing behind the plate. They've only thrown out four base runners out of 27 this year, but... The Gators haven't been able to take advantage of that because they've been playing from behind the entire weekend. They haven't had a chance to push, you know, press the issue and put pressure on the Bulldogs as much as they've wanted to. So that's something, you know, maybe if they tie the ball game up, that's something you could see in the last two or three innings. Sheldon has one of the two Gator hits on the day. Off the handle and straight back. There's your left on base, both sides. The nine, though, really sticks out for Florida. Two big opportunities. He left three on in the third, two in the sixth. The two in the sixth were both in scoring position. 
No action in the state bullpen. Strike three is the call. That's just the third time a Gator has struck out today. Mm. That's a call, good frame, yeah. I guess. I guess. Like I said, home plate umpire Eddie Newsom is definitely like that low strike throughout today and didn't stop right there. Curlin first pitch swinging. I mean, thinking ahead, a candidate in the stolen base scenario for the Gators down the road in this ball game, if it came up to it, be Armando Albert. Here's a guy that can run. Cade Curlin 0 for 3. Does have five home runs on the year. This is off the handle. And Cade's still frustrated with his hands. The hand injury is just still lingering. I said, I said to him before the game today, I said, looking a little more like yourself. He says, I still can't grip the bat the way God, I want that's, to. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. It's lasted that long. Yeah, he's a tough kid, man. He's really fighting through for his team. They need him out there, and he's he's been successful this weekend, but he is struggling a little bit. His hand hurts. Long wait here from Sierra. Out on strikes is Curlin. Back-to-back -back strikeouts makes it two down now in the bottom of the seventh inning. Good spot right yeah, there. You got to go after that. That's one of those things we talk about, Luke. You know, when, when he turns his swing up, I mean, he could put a charge in one. I mean, that wind is steps in. Yep. blowing out to right field, and he could take something up and away and ride it out there. Give the Gators the lead. He rips one to left and almost missed playing it as downs, but he comes up with the ball in glow. Go to Jordan up to start things. And now time call. He got something in his eye. Jordan has not got himself a hit today. Yeah, and that's where he's dangerous, too, yep. because this, this is a guy. You know, an interesting story about the Dakota the Jordan. He actually entered the transfer portal last year last year and it lasted less than about 12 hours because then he called coach up at 6 a.m. Coach Lamont's I changed my mind I'm, I'm staying. That's got to be a best phone call Lamont has got and and he said he had some outside influence and he said I just need to not hear those people and decided to stay where he where he loves it in I mean, Mississippi I, State. Obviously the team was ecstatic to have the guy back and Chris Lamonis obviously pretty excited too, but that's got to be a little bit weird. I mean, the kid wants to enter the portal and go somewhere else and just, I don't know, it's interesting. And, and the rumored team was the University of Georgia that, that he perhaps was thinking about going. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Jim Ellis about that uh, radio guy today. Boys, Georgia's scoring runs right now this year. <laughs> Charlie Condon scoring yeah, runs. Yeah, that's a good point. They scored 11 <laughs> yesterday but lost. And uh, all of a sudden now, Newsom's strike zone has tightened up. That's two pitches that by my count in this at bat that very well have gone the other way. Three balls and one strike now to the guy flirting with 400. Now he gets it full. It's only three games working today. And a lot of the series started on Thursday this time around. Four SEC series went Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Georgia's at Tennessee today, Kentucky at Ole Miss. Struck him out. Woo! Wow. That just goes to show you right there when a kid gets a little bit of confidence on the mound, actually feels good. He feels like he can throw it where he wants to. You see that velocity. I mean, you see a 97 right there that you, you haven't really seen from McNeely. You've seen mid-90s, 94, 95, but running that 97 up the zone, that's a tough pitch to hit, even for Dakota Jordan. And Garrison left his glove down on the ground just like that. Didn't show the target. Hines, first pitch swinging, shoots one into right. Yeah, McNeely came in in that series against AM, closed it out, and that the confidence has built since then. Since then, yep. Yeah. I mean, you can just tell. You see him walking around on the mound. He doesn't have those scared eyes now. He has those locked in eyes, and he has that and, charisma around him now. And, and the problem was when he was starting, he was leaving a lot of stuff in the middle of the plate. The ball wasn't moving, and they were turning it on him. And different guy from, from the relief aspect. And Sully loves him. I mean, yeah. going into the season, that was one of the guys Sully was raving about.
Connor Heisack, the center fielder at the plate. Got him to pop up. Hayden Yost there to make the catch. Yost came in defensively after pinch hitting for Jalen Guy in the sixth inning. The other defensive replacement, or I guess stayed in the lineup, was Armando Albert. It's third base for Florida. Yeah, and he'll lead off next inning, yep. and that's why you want to keep this to a one-run ball game because Albert gets on. Maybe you exploit what we were talking about, mm -hmm. their lack of throwing runners out because Albert definitely a threat to go on the bases. So Hines still at first, and a wave and a miss by Aaron Downs. Yeah, but you get to the eighth inning and you're down two runs, then Sully's probably not going to chance it by sending Albert. Absolutely. With the tying run of the plate. So that's why you want to keep it to a one run lead right here. Downs takes a wicked fastball at 96 miles an hour for strike two. Yeah, this is good stuff right now. Delia, birthday boy on St. Patrick's Day this month. Comes that slider. Did he go? Yep, and on the tag, he is out. A one out single for Hunter High by pitch. Armando Albert was hit by a pitch when he was a pinch hitter in the sixth inning. He's ready to go for the Gators in the eighth. So is Sierra, and that's a pop foul out of play. Seven, eight, and nine here, starting with Albert in the Gators lineup. And if he gets on, everything slows up, and, and it, that's what you want. You want diverted attention with him on the bases, so imperative that he gets on any way he can here. A one. Same result. Seven comeback wins for the Gators this season. Number seven was Friday night. And Albert's good at making himself big in an 0-2, getting hit with a pitch. We've seen him do it. Next from Sierra. That's going to get out of play as well. This is the second highest scoring inning of the season for the Florida Gators. Second only to the first. 36 runs have been plated by Florida in the eighth, including a couple on Friday night. The veteran transfer here battling against Sierra, trying to stay alive, and now wants time. Yeah, from FAU, by the way, of Boleyn High School in Miami-Dade County. I remember going down there and doing a clinic for that high school when Armando was on the team. His dad coached it. There's your tote board. Runs by inning. The 0-2 pitch, up and away. Yeah, good waste pitch right there. Boy, if he could just top one towards third base, third base and playing back, he's got good speed. Swing and a miss, down on strikes is Albert. Here to start at the bottom of the eighth. So the Gators are now two for 22 at the plate this afternoon. Just went up and away and he chased it. But with two strikes, you're going to have to go after something borderline. Tanner Garrison, the catcher now with one away. Takes strike one. Mississippi State. Bullpen kind of at the ready. Sierra has been dealing here. Mershon in the hole. Long throw. And Garrison's going to be safe. Hines couldn't get to the baseball, and the Gators have a base runner with one out. Base hit, I would assume. I would assume so as well. Yeah. Throw that from the outfield. That's a really good job for Mershon right there. As you can see, a ball in the hole. Realized that Garrison, not an A-plus runner, took his time, got a good throw off, and just wasn't on line. Tough play for Hines to try to hold the bag right there. And, and if it is on line, he probably makes yeah. a great play. But a very athletic Garrison leaping over Hines on the ground. Catchers okay. are athletic now. Catchers are athletic. What do I get you and Cardozo in the same booth? No, I agree. <laughs> I, was, I was a catcher in high school, yep. so I agree with that. that oh, they got to be athletic that then. Baby. Huh? Score that a single for Garrison. So now Hayden Yost. one count to the freshman. Shoots this one into left. Downs. Glasses on is there for out number two. Well, the good news is Cags is guaranteed an at-bat in this ballgame. 
So he would be now in the hole. Cagliolone with two outs here. Shelton representing the top of the order. And Colby's 0 for 3. He did reach hit by pitch in the third inning. Scored one of the two Gator runs. He's got a shine here. The shift is to the infield. Right side of Shelton. Boy, this would be a great way to break out of it right here. Take a pitch inside, pull it, or stay on something away and go yard. The wind's blowing out the left center right now. Another long way from Sierra. Popped him up. This will get out of play down the left field side. And to me, that was a good sign for Shelton right there. That's the kind of miss he wants. Staying through the ball a little bit more, not pulling off. That's, I mean, his bread is buttered to the middle of the field. It's a better miss right there for him. And how many times have we seen him left on left stay on it and shoot it to the left side? And if he can get something up and away and shoot it out there, Gators would have the lead. 1-1 one, one on the way, off the end of the bat. We just showed you old glory out there in left. That wind has been shifting today. When we started the day, it was blowing out to right. It went to left at one point, back to right. Now, out to left again. They flip on the shift and put Mershon back at short. And the third baseman, Chester's now on the right side. Big pitch upcoming, both sides right here. And Sierra again, all the way down to two on the pitch clock. Got a swing and a miss. Shelton's down on Strutters trying to come back like they did on Friday night. And Luke McNeely trying to keep this a one run game. He got a hold the other night and eventually a win in relief when the Gators came back in the bottom of the ninth. Seven, eight, and nine for the Bulldogs here in the top of the ninth inning. Bryce Chance. Even now 1-1 against Luke McNeely. And if this game goes any longer than the limit, he's saved the bullpen as McNeely. That one is yanked foul. Chester will be next, then Johnny Long. That's what's scheduled right now for Chris Lamonis, head coach of Mississippi State. The last time the Bulldogs were here in Gainesville, 2019, and they won two of three games. Here's the one-two pitch. Uh, and a line drive base hit starts things of the night. So second hit today for their designated hitter, Bryce Chance. And that has the Gator bullpen working again. Slater and Fisher up and throwing right now for Florida. As Nate Chester gets set to uh, dig in on the right side. Yeah, that's your two best out there right now, so see how they play this. Gators have turned 11 double plays this season. Let's see if they go bunt here. Eight hole hitter Chester. 0 for 3 today. Gets a bunt down. Albert. Stepping over the mound gets the out at first. I'll tell you why that bunt worked. He kept his bat angle. It was a high pitch, but he kept the bat angle. And you keep your bat angle on that 45, the ball's going to go down. You're not going to pop it up. So notice how he had that angle on the bat perfectly. If you put a bat in that angle on a vice and throw 100 pitches out, they'll go, all of them will go down. So great job of bunting. Moves chance to second base. So one out now, the catcher, Johnny Long. 0 for 2 plus a walk today. These two schools have been playing baseball against each other a long, long time. It all began back in 1912. One thing that's impressed me the entire weekend is not necessarily just the Bulldogs hitting in general, but their two-strike hitting. They have countless two-strike hits, and I don't know if it's, you know, the Gators just not putting them away. Or... Shelton here. Cross his body to first. Got him. That's a big time play. Two gone now in the top of the ninth inning. That also keeps the runner at second with the ball going to the left side of the infield. Yeah, that's a little bit of a distraction for Shelton. He was able to ward it off and make the strong throw. He glanced at the runner, but said, okay, he's not going anywhere and makes a great throw on the run. I mean, that kid's got a rocket for an arm. He's always had the range over at shortstop. It's just really understanding how he needs to like move his feet and have his body in a certain position to make plays like that because he's always been able to get there. It's just how is he going to be able to efficiently finish the play every single. 
The pitch right down mm. central. I think the, that mound visit was really, well, first of all, Sully definitely made sure with uh, home plate umpire <laughs> because, not to go over the pitch right. count or the uh, timeout limit again. But, uh, yeah, a lot of it was just making sure that he understands the plan right here. This is a huge out, if not the biggest out of the game for him right here. Keep it out of one run game. But, yeah, McNeely's stuff is playing really well, and that's the guy you want on the mound. The Gators will send up Evans, Caglione, and Shelnut in the bottom half of the inning. Runner in second. And the 0-2. Harrison stabbed it. Got a tough hitter on deck, so yes. you want to get him out right here and right now. Switch hitter, Mershon, would like to get a chance. Gators obviously wanted to keep this right here at 3-2. Swing and a miss, he got him. That's the third strikeout, none bigger than that. Follow, then Tyler Shelnut. Evan Sierra deals the first in the bottom of the ninth and hits Evans, ouch. Mm. You could hear that up here. And he is the fifth Gator hit by a pitch, tying a season high. Back on February the 23rd, Columbia hit five Gators in that game. Where exactly does it get him? Right off the tricep, just above the elbow. I he had a pat on there, yep. but I don't know how much that helped, because yep. you could tell he's in pain. You know, you, you say in a scenario like this to win the ball game, a bloop and a blast, I'll take a plunk and a blast right here. Tying runs aboard. Jared Schwein checking on Ty Evans, the Gators baseball trainer. Yeah, that Evo shield. I mean, it doesn't eliminate all the pain there. It just prevents a broken bone or something like that. It keeps him out for a few weeks, but that's going to linger for a little bit. Yep. And a big There's round of applause as Caglione steps in. They're sticking with him, Sierra. They're saying, you're the guy. Cags is hitless today. Takes strike one. He's walked three times. Tied for most in a game this season by a Gator. The 0-1 pitch. Swing and a rip foul down the right side. Boy, that's the best swing he's gotten on a ball today. He did sacrifice with a fly ball in the third into right field. The one thing you got to fight as a hitter with his power, just hit the ball hard. Don't try to hit a home run because his natural power, when he meets it, it'll take it out of the yard. 0-2 count, shift to the right side of the infield. Up and away, one ball, two strikes. Told you the series began back in 1912. Last weekend, Mississippi State won their 1,000th SEC game. And only four schools have that many. Florida's one of them. LSU and Alabama, the other two. Tie run at first. The one-two pitch. Swing and a drive down the right field side. If it's fair, it's gone. It's a home run. Chop this one up for the Gators. Caglione with a two-run blast, and the Gators win the game and the series by the final score of four.